Hey everyone, this is Dan. This is just to show the uh, difference between using a folding binding attachment for your sewing machine, whether it be a straight stitch or a, uh, in my case, a walking foot. Um, first I'll show doing it by hand. Uh, this is the way I have been doing it since I got my machine, but uh, boy, these are a revelation. They're not very expensive, and what you uh, spend for the actual attachment, they're uh, pretty cool actually. They uh, basically your bias material, in this case it's a nylon, basically just gets fed in. Just need a little bit of a something to push it through. As you can see, it folds it for you. Very handy. So in this case, I have a three-quarter inch binder. So that's three-quarter inch wide material. The tape. This is nylon tape. I also have a, please excuse the uh, camera here, just getting it set up. Um, I also have a one inch bias folder, binder attachment. It's called lots of different things, but it's basically all the same thing. The uh, uh, So first I will show doing it by hand. So what I've usually been doing is I just kind of give it a little bit of a fold like this. Just take any sort of material. The downside to these is that there is kind of a limited thickness of how much material you can put through the gate here. You can widen this up, but that will kind of uh, affect in the uh, final, where the stitch is going to lie here, because this is going to be pulled farther back. So you're not going to have a perfect sandwich. It's going to be kind of off a little bit because this is getting pulled up. So it's going to be pulled away. So first I'll show you how to do it by hand. This is how a lot of people do it. And there's nothing wrong with it. If you're doing one little project here and there, it's, uh, it's fine. But uh, if you really want to have a professional uh, looking product like I do, I believe in you know, putting your best foot forward. Um, so for if you're making things for anybody else, uh, then in my opinion, you want it to look as good as possible. So with this, you basically have to just bury our needle here, get it started. So just run a couple stitches and get ourselves started. And then basically you just feed your material in. So what I generally do is I will pre-fold it like such. That's the nice thing with this nylon versus like a polyester, which has got a little more spring to it. This nylon kind of keeps the keeps it uh, folded. It kind of has some memory a little bit along that fold line there. So you basically just feed your material in, and away you go. Just fold. So when you're doing short little runs, it's fine. You know, you know it allows your hands to be free and to do whatever you want to do. And many people, you know, do it this way. If you're making small one-off projects, that's great. But as you can see, you have to you have to watch so many different things. When you let's pull our material out here, so as you can see, the line can start off quite nice. You can set it up. Obviously, you're feeding it by hand, so there's going to be some waviness to the line. So you can see it kind of can drift. You can have some drift of the stitch. So if you're using a uh, contrasting thread color to what your bias material is, so if this was black, you wouldn't really notice it, but since you're, if in this case I'm using a silver, uh, it does show. So if you're anything like me and you enjoy looking at a visually pleasing product, this will not do. So obviously with practice, you can get better. Um, I have certainly gotten better. I haven't been sewing for very long, but you can certainly get better. Uh, the nice thing, too, about this nylon tape, I get uh, mine from American Plastics. They uh, sell in small quantities, and you don't have to be a wholesaler in order to get uh, material from them. So look on American Plastics, and then just look on nylon tape, bias tape. So in this, so what we'll do is... The cool thing about this is that it's got, it's basically infinitely adjustable. You can take the, uh, let's just get ourselves focused, sorry. 
I'm a one-man band here. So this is the three-quarter, three-quarter inch wide tape, nylon tape. And as you can see, you can adjust the side to side. So depending on where you want to place that stitch line on your bias material, if you want to ride on the edge or if you want to on the inside edge. Personally, that's what I choose to do. Get about maybe a sixteenth of an inch to maybe three thirty seconds in. Um, that way, anything that catches up against that when it's finally sewn on the product is not going to lift it up and cause any stress. But in this case, as you can see, it does the folding for you. So it leaves your hand, both of your hands free to be able to either guide your material or just to make, your, make it easier on yourself. And you can adjust your travel with your two mounting screws so you can go forward and back. And this is also to adjust, that's just further forward and back adjustment depending on how much room you need for your foot. In my case, I use a walking foot machine most of the time. I will be getting a straight stitch machine soon, but for now, um, I have just my walking foot. So I like to leave a little bit of a tail or a leader out. And then in this case, I'll leave it just set up the way it was. I've already got this set up for approximately where I want the uh, stitch to be running. Uh, about maybe eighth of an inch in, three thirty seconds in from the what would be the inside edge of the, uh, the whatever product I'm sewing. So we'll set ourselves back up here. So it's focused, and I'll bury our needle. Get a couple. So it's going, and we'll just run on the other side. So with this, you basically just want to keep that material pushed all the way in, not riding up, but you just want to keep it, the edge of it, right on the inside there. So it's pushing in right there. So what we'll do is we'll get ourselves started. And then because this is a walking foot machine, it's going to obviously pull through. It's going to pull the, because it's got feed dogs on the bottom of the foot. As you can see that that motion is pulling it through, kind of a rotary motion, and then there's the feed dogs on the bottom. So it's good for when you have multiple layers of material, thicker um, bunches of material. It helps to pull both on the top and the bottom at the same time. Uh, whereas a straight stitch machine, you just have the feed dogs on the bottom, so the top layers can slip. So here we go. So as you can see, I just have one hand free, whereas before I had to fold. So as you can see, all you have to do really is just basically keep this inside there. You just have to keep this fed up inside. Run off a little bit. There we go. And this is a swing away. They make binder attachments that don't have the swinging arm. So if you have a machine that's dedicated solely to binding, and you're just doing long straight runs, so to speak, then it will allow you to be able to just have a machine set up just for this purpose. And that's what a lot of commercial shops do, is they have machines just set up for this purpose. So as you can see, here was our first one done by hand. You can see the stitch line can vary. Um, as you get more experienced, you can get better at this, but you have to use both hands. You have to maneuver it. In this case, as you can see, the stitch line runs pretty much perfectly. And you saw that I was basically just needing to use one hand. I could use two hands, depending on the amount of material that I need to feed in. But in this case, you can see the stitch line visually is much more appealing. It's, it's, it just looks better, at least to me. So I made this video not as a promotional video for any of these products. I don't make any money off of these products. Well, I make money off of the products that I sell using these products, let's just say, but I don't make any money off of the sale of these. I'm just basically making this as a tutorial video because I've learned a lot from other people's tutorial videos and I like to share it forward. So with that, uh, I got this off of eBay from a uh, seller, uh, N-G-O So, N-G-O-S-E-W. That's who I got mine from. And uh, I think these were about the three quarter, I think, was about twenty-two or twenty-three dollars, maybe a little bit more. And then I also got my one-inch binder at the same time, and I believe this was about twenty-seven or twenty-eight dollars. Uh, you can find other ones. Uh, there's a company out there, Sale Right, and they make theirs. Theirs has a small little adjustment screw here, or a small little screw. They claim it keeps it from swinging into the foot. 
the design of this one, the base here swings into the actual base plate. So this little arm, this little bracket here locks in. So I didn't see a need for that screw. Maybe the their manufacturer, whoever is making their binding attachment foot is different. So the screw is needed uh, for their swing away binder. But um, theirs also costs $70 and there's nothing wrong with theirs. I think theirs is a nice product. I've used one before on another machine. But for me, since I'm in business for myself and I'm just getting started, I wanted to uh, keep my prices low to my customers, but I also wanted to keep my overhead as low as possible. So for attachments like these, these are things that you can use across multiple machines um, because the whole setup for the mounting screws is the same, basically industry standard. So you can take this binder attachment, use it on this machine, I could take it and use it on a straight stitch machine, as long as it's more of a commercial machine. But many larger home machines can also um, accommodate these as well. Uh, so I prefer to use industrial machines because what I'm sewing is generally a little heavier duty. And I just like that these machines feed so much faster. And they feed much more efficiently. The motor is much, much bigger. And uh, it's just a, in my opinion, it's just a, a superior product for me to use for my needs. So... If you have any questions, um, I'll try to answer, but otherwise this is just an informational video, a little how-to, a little um, FYI video, so to speak. These uh, binder attachments, they come in various sizes. You can see them on that um, eBay seller's site, NGO, so N-G-O-S-E-W. Um, I have no affiliation with him other than him or them, uh, basically other than having purchased two of their products from their eBay store. So uh, feel free to go look for them, um, and uh, I hope this video is uh, informative for you, and I hope it will help. Maybe if you choose to pick one of these up, uh, you'll uh, it'll help you make a better product and uh, also save you some time, because time is money, as we all know. So one more time, you have your folded by hand. And obviously you can be better than me. I'm still somewhat new. And then you have your line done with the folding attachment. So thank you very much for your time. Hope you guys have a wonderful weekend or a wonderful day or whenever you're viewing this. And uh, if you have any questions, let me know. I will do my best to try to answer. Um, otherwise, happy sewing and have a good one. Bye-bye.